See, the all-white America, it was good. It's good while it lasted, but that's over. It took a few hundred years, but uh, the whole world has come to, they always were here, but more of the world uh, coming is coming to America and living here. They say America, the United States, gonna have maybe 400 million people in this country. 400 million. That's a lot of folks. We got the room, though. And we're going to work it out politically. We got to share in the, in the bounty. But then again, uh, the, the, the gap between the rich and poor is really, really insane now. It is what it is. That's why, as the gap between the rich and poor, an average American is only going to make like $10, $20 an hour. That's why we need universal health care, Medicare for all who want it. If you don't want it, then you don't have to take it then. Medicare for all you want it. Because most of us ain't going to make a lot of money. Let's face it. And most Americans make under 50 grand, and the rest of us make under uh, uh, make under 100. I make under 50. <laughs> I ain't gonna lie. That's why it's uh, we, Barack Obama's great, but you know the Republicans give him a really hard time. And uh, if he doesn't win back the House, he won't get much done. Well, he may have you know do some executive order stuff, as they say, but you know. Uh, there's people here that don't want the country to progress. It's a country of different peoples, all from all over the world, you know, living is one. <laughs> and some of these hardcore Republicans, uh, they don't, crazy Republicans, there's some good Republicans, some of the folks crazy. They don't want it to, uh, they don't want this country to progress. I can vote for a Colin Powell Republican. I like Colin Powell. But some of these uh, Tea Party folks, they're out of their mind. And they're scared because they're scared because the country is less white. I get it. They're frightened. I mean, because they're going to have to live among all these quote-unquote people of color. And most of the, most of the folks, uh, Europeans got to understand, the, most of the world is people of color. I think uh, Caucasians are, well, I mean, when they say, you know, race is a social construct, we know that. Most of the Caucasians, they are... They are minority. They are the minority on the planet Earth. I mean, a serious minority. They are minority on the planet Earth. They the minority. Yeah, I'm going down Western Western Avenue, southbound, West Side. What's your peeps? Like, I met Paul Ryan at the airport. He's what? He's a congressman from Wisconsin, like Janesville, not too far from Chicago. And nice guy, but his politics is kooky. They really believe that stuff. That Iron Rand, Iron Rand, what's that woman's name? They believe that crazy stuff. Everybody's not, it's not super bright. Everyone's not super educated. Most people don't have a hard, a drive to achieve. They just want to like, give me a little plot of land, give me a little job, I'm happy. Most Americans just want, you know, just want to live in a decent neighborhood. Schools are good. Safe neighborhood. Affordable neighborhood. Folks don't want much. Everybody doesn't want to be a high achiever. Everybody doesn't want to make three hundred grand, three hundred thousand dollars a year. Some folks don't even make a hundred thousand dollars a year. Just so uh, they just want peace. There ain't, most folks don't make waves. But the Republicans, man, they've stopped Barack Obama from progressing his country. It's really quite sad because they know the demographics are out. It's just totally against them. So they're gonna have to. They're gonna change eventually. They're gonna lighten it up. It? Maybe uh, the next administration, if uh, Hillary Clinton becomes president, or Chris Christie becomes yeah, president. Chris, Chris Christie, or because the, the Republicans, they if they smart, they'll, they'll nominate Chris Christie, not an old crazy kooks and whatnot. But if Chris Christie becomes president, or uh, Hillary Clinton becomes president, maybe the Republican House won't be so crazy. You hope. Don't get me wrong, I ain't voting for Chris Christie. <laughs> Although I think he's somewhat sane, I, I wouldn't vote for him. And uh, it'd be great to have the first female president. Uh, Hillary Clinton is paid. Hillary Clinton's paid her dues. Let's face it, especially after Barack Obama and Team Obama beat them in 2008 because they thought they were invincible. So they learned a good lesson. You never underestimate your opponent. Never. Never. So she's paid her dues, and so if she wants to be president, it's, it's, it's for her to, to make it happen. But people, the jobs ain't coming back. A lot of these jobs just ain't coming back. We're going to 
gonna have to take what they give us. It's a global economy, and uh, I can bring Dr. Warren on and talk about all that global economy and, <laughs> and all these conspiracy theories. The point I'm trying to make as I go into the gentrified West Loop, or near West Side, or West Loop as they call it. Once you pass, once you go east of Ashland, where I am right now, east of Ashland, you go to the gentrified. The, behind me is partially gentrified. This is fully gentrified. <laughs> uh, the point I'm trying to make is that the conservatives can't, can't be too conservative because we, we're not going to have a, a conservative right-wing utopia. That's not going to happen. And the liberals, progressive, their progressive liberal utopia, that ain't going to happen either. It's going to be 60-40, sometimes 70-30, hopefully 50-50. But, you know, so you can't be so rigidly uh, tied to these ideologies. We have to move forward, people. Just like this city here, Chicago. A lot of folks don't like Rahm Emanuel, but all he needs is 50% plus one, right? <laughs> Every, he, he, this man can count. So there's a lot of color folks, if you will, African Americans are, and some white progressives, they upset the mayor, but the mayor know how to count votes. Politician. It's about counting votes. Who, re who is registered? Who goes to vote consistently? Who are these people? Let's get them out there. So and the folks say they gonna get rid of the mayor. I say they might. He don't care. He got him. He's a millionaire. I don't have a problem with Mayor Rahm Emanuel. He's doing what's best for. Chicago. He's a corporatist, as they say, but he's doing what's best for Chicago. And what's best for Chicago may not be best for poor people in Chicago. Because the poor will always be among us. The poor will always be among us. And a lot of times the poor don't vote. So, you know, so the mayor understands, he understands the numbers. He knows who votes, who doesn't vote. So, people, they complain, they get on the radio, they get on TV and hoop and holler. Then you ask them, do you vote? Everybody in your house, do they vote? No. Okay, how about your children? How well do they do in school? People complain about Rahm Emanuel closing the schools down, which is horrible. But if you ask most people, how your children doing in school? I don't want to talk about that. That ain't the issue. <laughs> you know what? If your son or daughter getting C's, and I mean, C's is just tolerable. A's and B's is the way to go. D's and F's are unacceptable. So folks complain about the mayor, but if you ask them how their children doing in school, then they get, mostly folks get quiet, <laughs> real quiet. And let's face it, people, life is unfair. You're going to have better schools. Some people have better schools, better parents, better neighborhood, because they got a better, you know, they were dealt a better hand to you. That's life. Life ain't fair. Life is difficult. Deal with it. I remember over 20 some years ago when I started doing a public access show down here, it was like warehouses and whatever, factories, and man, it's all gentrified, you know, lofts and stuff. A lot of, see, the city is cool. Any city, I don't care if you're Denver, Milwaukee, city is cool. City is great. Suburbs are cool, city is cool. The problem is that you don't want to be around poor people. That's the problem, especially poor African Americans where I live, because most of them don't know how to act. Well, I shouldn't say most. There are a percentage that mess it up for everybody, because they don't know how to act. And uh, that's the real issue when it comes to African Americans in places like Chicago, Milwaukee, St. Louis, whatever, uh, the city of Atlanta. It's come down to parenting and all the resources, all the social programs, all of it is really to replace, to supplement uh, the lack of good parenting or supplement the parenting that's there. You have to have good parenting, P good parents with resources. And if you don't have good parents with resources, then unfortunately the state and charities got to come in and uh, and support the mama, support grandma in the raising of their children. This place been gentrified so much, they built a Target right down the street over here in Van Buren, but I ain't gonna go by the Target. It's unbelievable. They talk about Walmart, but they built more Targets in the city uh, than it's Walmarts. And I, I like both. I like Target and I like Walmart. They're both cool. But it's just amazing, the gentrification. and. Uh, if the economy picks back up, the gentrification will continue, which is cool. Somebody wins, somebody loses, people. That's how it is. Because if I had the money, see, the city has lost population, mainly because so many Ameri you know, a lot of uh, ethnic Anglos have moved out of the city and they've been replaced by Latinos, uh, mainly Mexican, in the Chicago here. I'm talking about Chicago. And then um, a lot of African Americans have left Chicago for a lot of different reasons, a lot of good reasons. 
and so the city's lost population. But the downtown area, I'm, like, I'm just right outside downtown, but a two mile radius has really gained a lot of population because of gentrification. Which is good, people. Some people, oh, that's bad. No, that's good because uh, the folks coming, if they keep it moving in, it, you know, it can, uh, you know, it, it can, in theory, keep our taxes stabilized. People keep moving out of the city, it falls apart like Detroit did. We don't want that. Not at all. Not at all. So you want people to pull, move in. I don't care where they're from. Any part of the globe to move into your town so you can, uh, won't, so your town won't become a ghost town. That's what you don't want. You don't want your town to become a ghost. I'm on the near west side, uh, coming up to Whitney Young, the alma mater of uh, Michelle Robinson, aka the First Lady. It's, it's a few blocks away. But what I'm trying to say is that, uh, and on the far south side where I live, uh, there's some neighbors out here that's like uh, neighborhoods like falling apart. They really are, because nobody wants to move in because of the crime and the bad public schools. And the, bad, and the public schools are really only bad because the kids are bad. And the kids are bad because the parents are bad. And people say, don't beat up on the parents. I say, listen here, somebody got to beat up on the parents. You got to stop it. You got to tell, the, tell these kids stop having all these damn babies. Here's, uh, here's Whitney Young over here. Now, y'all see it? Whitney Young. Alma mater of the First Lady. Amazing. Pretty cool. I took a tour of that tour. I, mean, I went to open house, man, one time. And it was just amazing. Talking to the principal, you know, students, administration. What a, what a great school. And let's, and let's face it, people. Everybody can't go to a great school like Whitney Young. Whitney Young. It ain't gonna happen. You gotta do the best you can. There's Crane down the street over here. If you, just, if you go to Crane Tech, you just have to do the best you can. And uh, go from there. All right, I'm back over here. Near, see, you can see the United Center. I'm back over here near the, see the, near the United Center. Okay. Conversation's over. Clean neighborhoods, safe neighborhoods, and excellent schools. In the African American community, we just suffer from a lack of leadership, good leadership, because most of our political leaders are corrupt. And one love, I understand why they're corrupt, you know. But uh, we need, African Americans, we need to get some leaders and some leadership and some visionary leaders that are not political and not religious. And we gotta stop that. I'm not saying, you know, you know. But we need to get some people who are business leaders, civic leaders, but not. Politician and preachers, that's enough of that. That's gotten us for, for us. We, we can't get no go no further than that. I don't know what's going on here. Something going on at the park.